guys, how's it going? Welcome again. Uh, this time we're gonna brew. Uh, okay, before I tell you what we're gonna brew, let me tell you, right here in Victoria, BC, in Canada, is super hot. We are about like almost 30 degrees right now. It's like insanely hot. Most of you wanna gonna laugh at me and say, man, you're Mexican, you're supposed to be uh, um, used to this heat. Yes, I am Mexican, and the city that I come from, yes, you get up to 40, 40 something. That's why I'm here. I don't like the heat, <laughs> but it's okay. All right, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take advantage of the temperature. So we're gonna make a pseudo lager. Uh, we're gonna use a yeast called a Crispy by Escarmen, which is a Kevike, and that yeast like to ferment between 22, 25, so, and it's supposed to be get really clean in eight days. So we're gonna do the test, we're gonna do the experiment. I don't believe it's gonna be super clean in eight days, being honest. I think it's gonna take maybe two, maybe three weeks, but uh, I might be wrong. The only thing to know, the only way to know is by get made the, making the experiment, right? Like trying to, uh, the only way to know is actually trying to do it, all right? So what we're gonna use is a very simple recipe, the same recipe that we use with the New Zealand Pilsner and the Mexican Pilsner. So basically what it is is eight kilos of uh, Pilsner malt, which I'm going to use um, uh, best malts, which is a European one, of course, and one and a half kilos of a Carapils, and we're gonna need one kilo of uh, white wheat malt. And that's all we're gonna need for, for, um, for the grain. Um, in terms of hop, I'm, I'm, I want to, I know I have some, and not some, I think I know I have a lot in my, in my freezer, but uh, we're gonna use a sauce. Uh, I wanna try to do it kinda like Germanish, uh, Czech kinda idea. Uh, we're looking for the 1010 final gravity, something very refreshing for this heat wave that is coming. Oh, actually, it's here already. So, okay, what we're gonna do today, we're gonna, as you know, we're gonna mill, we're gonna, well, we're gonna pick, uh, wait and then and then mill, and then we're just gonna go to uh, Brian, to Clandestino, to uh, brew our beer tomorrow. So for today, we're just gonna get everything ready, and yeah, so let, you know what, let's start. Hey guys, that's Sunday now. We're here in Clandestino. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna get the uh, mash tun ready, uh, fill them up with water, you know, let's start everything. Okay, uh, we got the mash tun ready. Or what we're gonna do now is 11 gallons of water. Hey guys, well, uh, as you see, we got 11 gallons. Uh, we're gonna dough the grain in, but before we dough the grain in, we're gonna uh, uh, put eight gallons of water on our secondary uh, kettle, and that would be for the sparge. So we're gonna use eight gallon, and we're gonna get it ready for whenever we need it. It's basically just ready to go. Eight gallons, Let, let's pour it. Hey guys, well, eight gallons, we got ready. Uh, we dough the grain uh, with about uh, 55 degrees, so we're gonna heat up a, uh, to 65, and we're gonna uh, let it mash there for, uh, according to the iodine test, we're gonna basically check every 20 minutes. We're gonna see what's the reaction, and we go from there, okay? Well, uh, let's heat it up. Right, as you can see, 65. Well guys, it's been 30 minutes. What we're gonna do is basically um, take a sample and do, we're gonna do the iodine test and see how we're doing and yeah, let's do it. All 
All right, guys, as you've seen, uh, we did the iodine test. It's all uh, negative, so that means we convert all the starch into sugar. So now what are we gonna do? We're gonna heat it up to 75 degrees to do the mash out, okay? Let's do it. Well, guys, 75 degrees, let's transfer. Hey guys, well, we transferred already, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna uh, start boiling, of course, and also we're gonna weigh 276 grams of sass. This sass is at a 3.1% alpha acid, and my calculation tells me that if I'm looking for 30 IBUs on a 15 gallon, so I need a 276 grams. So, yeah, we're just gonna weigh it to add it to, but before that, we're gonna start boiling, all right? Let's do it. Two seventy six rams of uh, SAS hop and three point one percent alpha acid. We aim it for thirty IBUs on fifteen gallons. Okay, let's add it. Hey guys, well, um, at this point, uh, I think it's like twenty minutes left on boiling. So when it's fifteen minutes left, we're gonna add forty grams of uh, SAS hop, and that will be for our flavor. Also, we're gonna add the the tablet, the weird flock and we're gonna put the, the coil in for cooling so it start disinfecting at and we also wanna put the, the pump and everything, okay? Well, let's get everything ready. All right, guys, uh, 15 minutes left. We're gonna add the uh, weird flock tablet and also the 40 grams of sass, all right? Let's do it. Well guys, uh, we're like uh, about like 10 minutes to finish. So what we're gonna do, we're basically going to um, get ready 40 grams of sauce. And that one we're gonna add it as a hop stand. When, while we're cooling at 80 degrees about that, that's what we're gonna add it. All right, let's get it ready. You hear it, it's time to turn it off. We are finished. Hey guys, well, finally we're finished. Uh, 1044, that's what we got. So I was expecting 1042. It's a little hot right now, kind of dry. So yeah, we boil uh, off a little bit more. So last time I got 15 and a half, now I have 15. So that's cool, that's what I was looking for. Uh, we use a uh, Scarman Labs uh, yeast called a uh, Crispy, which is a Kevaik, and we're going to ferment uh, about uh, 25 uh, Celsius. So yeah, that's it, that's it for today. Uh, let's go rest and let it ferment and yeah, all right, let's rest. Hey guys, it's been uh, two days, this Tuesday today. A, I came last night to check the beer, uh, which is like, I brewed it on Sunday, so on Monday I checked it, and I noticed like temperature was like, it was fermented about 26 degrees, uh, so I didn't touch it, I left it like that. And the next day, which is today, I came and check it, and uh, I noticed the temperature went down to 20 now, so that's mean the majority of the fermentation has happened, or has occurred already. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna transfer into the carvers and see what happened. Uh, let it condition in to see. Uh, people recommend this juice, the crispy from Scarment, so I've never used it before. So let's see what happens. So let's get everything ready. Hey 
Okay guys, well, yeah, I've just seen we transferred already. Uh, we got uh, 1.010. Uh, I'm very impressed. Uh, I've been talking about that I'm making a New Zealand Pilsner. Uh, I think this video is gonna be up before the New Zealand Pilsner and and you might want to ask it like, why New Zealand Pilsner? You'll see and you will understand in the future. Uh, anyways, <laughs> what happened in here is like, this one is going so fast that I believe in five days it's going to be in kegs. Uh, the New Zealand one, I used the Safe Lager or Safe Lager from um, Fermentis, I believe it's 3470. Um, it has a little bit of smell of the sulfur and uh, it's taken quite a while to get rid of it. Uh, I've been reading about it. They say they create it and take quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of time to, to clear the beer. So yeah, uh, at this point, I would use the crispy. <laughs> but anyways, uh, well, when we transfer, we got everything ready. So we're gonna let it uh, condition it for about five, six days. We're gonna see how the evolution is of how it evolves. And from that, we basically decide if when we wanna transfer or not. But I guarantee you, this beer is gonna be in my fridge before the New Zealand Pilsner. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, it's salt for now, so let's go rest and let that beer uh, condition. Hey guys, well, um, very impressive. Day six and beer is ready to keg. So yeah, we're gonna transfer to keg. What we're gonna do, we're gonna add three grams, so three grams of a um, gelatin in 300, gram, oh, 300 milliliters of water. And I got two kegs, one is a 10, and another one is a fiber. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna add 200, gra uh, 200 milligrams into the 10 and a 100 milligrams into the fiber. All right, well, let's get everything ready. Hey guys, how's it going? The end of the video, the part that I enjoy most <laughs> when I get to try the beer that we just create. Um, when we can see the result of the experiments we just like, we were playing with, let's call it this way. Well, uh, first of all, I want to apologize about my boys. Um, I had to go to Mexico and I came back with COVID. Uh, anyways, uh, already did a test, I'm negative now, but kind of still a little bit of a there's no sore throat I just I need my boys back that's it but let's talk about this beer the pseudo lager with the crispy G's from Scarment seriously I cannot believe it that it was ready in seven days it was as clear as did it as it is seven days after I made it, it was just like that. It's been a little longer now in my fridge. As I said, I had to go to Mexico as an emergency. Um, so I uh, kind of stay on the fridge for a little bit. I could not grab up the video. So now I'm kind of getting the, the time to do it. But seriously, I promise to you guys, it was as clear as this one is. Maybe a little bit, a little bit hazier, but it's not much. You could see your finger through it if you like uh, put it onto a light just like it's happening right now. But uh, one of the things impressed me for this is, um, first of all, how quick it was ready. That, who would not be impressed with like a lager in seven days? <laughs> uh, what I'm impressed is how clean it is and not uh, talking about like the clarity of the beer. I'm talking about like the, the flavor. It's like, it's almost like, like a real lager. I'm very, very impressed. Uh, and I want to say apologize to Matt from One Under Water that he he keep telling me you should try it, you should try it. Like, I'm kind of traditional, I like to do like my lager the way it is. Sorry, man, you were completely right. This beer is insane. Uh, we're gonna do the same one, but we're gonna use a a Lutra. They told me it does the same thing. Uh, the reason why my followers in Mexico uh, they're been asking for like a gist that they can actually buy they can buy a scarment down down there so uh, I was my 
answer for that was Lutra. So I'm gonna make a, an experiment with Lutra, which that Lutra yeast that I got, it was um, it was, it was given from um, Beacon Brewing. Uh, the guys from Beacon Brewing gave it to me so I could make the experiment, um, which thank you so much. Um, so let's talk about this beer, but before that, subscribe to the channel. I mean, if you're not subscribed yet, subscribe to the channel, activate the, the notification bell so you know what's going on with the new videos coming out and everything. Um, it, the podcast is coming back. Like I said, I had to go to Mexico, but I, I was already talking to, uh, to Ian to get more, more uh, podcasts going on. And uh, give us a like. Uh, hit that like button, a uh, YouTube like kind of, kind of things. And keep, keep, uh, keep with the comments, man. Like all the guys that like leave the comments, I really enjoy it. Like it makes me feel that like you actually guys, uh, you guys motivate me to keep doing these videos. I mean, I'm having a, having a blast. I'm enjoying it. Obviously, ha, making beer and <laughs> tasting beer, it's nothing to not like, but uh, I really like the interaction with you guys and I um, want to thank you, like my channel has been growing fast, so I uh, want to thank everyone. So, Fernando, shut the hell up and try the beer. All right, I'll do it. If you want to keep twisting my arm, I'll do it. In Aroma, obviously it's missing that uh, Melanoidin things that I do, like melanoidin. Uh, the, you know, I do decoction in my uh, Bohemian Pilsner, so you get those like melanoidins uh, smell, which is basically the the fresh bread coming out of the oven smell kind of thing. Uh, but it's still smelling a little bit, you know, when you use European uh, malt, uh, in this case was like best malt. A, it kind of have a little bit more bready, like a bread, than the Canadian Pilsner, which it's not that I don't like it, but I prefer the European, being honest. Uh, I know a, the Canadian malting is putting out a European a Bohemian Pilsner malt. It's uh, like limited quantities and things like that. I, I just seen some ads. I, I would like to, to, to play with that one and see what's going on. But uh, beside that, it's melt better than the average like Pilsners around in Victoria, being honest. Uh, one of the things I don't like from the Pilsners from Victoria is maybe because they use the Canadian Pilsner mold and uh, they got a little kind of like stinky smell, like very particular for Pilsner, which this one doesn't have it. Now on flavor, ooh, I really like it, but I kind of make, let's call it a mistake, but uh, technically, normally when I boil here in Victoria, I normally lose about like a gallon out of 15 or 16 gallons that I'm making, I lose like about a gallon while I'm boiling. Uh, the day that I made this beer, it was really hot and dry, so I lost about two gallons that day. So that means the IBUs went a little bit higher than I was expecting, so it has a little bit a little bit of a kick, let's call it. Um, I don't mind it. I really like um, a hoppy uh, or bitter, you know, I like Bohemian Pilsner, it's supposed to be this way. And Ukrel is one of my favorite ones, so that's, it's, I'm not saying that this one tastes like that, but it's bitter as that one, that's my point. Uh, or that's what I wanted to say. But yeah, guys, um, I really enjoyed uh, making this beer and completely impressed, completely impressed uh, with the result, which I think that's gonna be my new lagers now. It's squeak, so CC, who <laughs> have to do so much stuff. I got a New Zealand Pilsner and steel on the fermenter because it has a little bit of sulfur. <laughs> smell on it, uh, which I was expecting it from that yeast from Fermentis, I forgot the name, 3470, whatever name it is, or number it is. But yeah, um, that's something I have to go and check. I haven't got, because like I said, I had COVID. Uh, maybe for next week, now that I know I'm negative, maybe next week I'm going to take a look. But uh, yeah, beside that, I guess uh, that's it. We'll see you on the next one.